Sorry about the canned music. <laughs> hey, everybody, I'm a little short here because uh, I didn't prepare well. We've been out of town. Welcome to another edition of Drummer Nation Live. We are truly live today with my uh, special guest, uh, artist uh, extraordinaire and good friend, Adam Nussbaum. How are you, brother? <laughs> how? If I knew how, I'd be a genius. Yeah. But Why everything are you? Where... is good. <laughs> you know where you are, right? I'm sitting in my chair in my little upstairs digital domain, and uh, there we go. Remember, wherever you go, there you are. That's it. He's catching <laughs> on. I'm starting to get Voss bombs now. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> to, to match Adam. <laughs> oh no. Anyway, everybody, we're just back from the Chicago Drum Show, and I want to start with that. Thanks, Rob. Yes. That's Rob Cook. Rob Cook is the creator, founder of the Chicago Drum Show some 33 years ago. And he's moved it on to another party. Somebody has bought the show, but Rob's going to still be around for another 10 years or so with exhibits and helping behind the scenes. But uh, the whole drum community owes a debt of gratitude to Rob Cook. He's kind of the granddaddy of the whole drum show thing. Now, Amen. What is it? And and Adam and I both happened to be there this week. I was honored to be asked to uh, to be interviewed about the cymbal industry because Rob writes a lot of books. He's got tons of them out there. You want to go to rebeats.com and you'll find his expertise and in, in his authorship on all kinds of great books about the drum industry. And uh, so he had me there to talk about cymbals because he's working on a cymbal book. And Adam uh, happened to be honored to be there with Adam, who was uh, one of the clinicians for the day. So we had fun, huh, Adam? Absolutely. It's just a massive drumgasm as <laughs> such. There's another one. <laughs> There's another one. Yeah, I mean, you had so many people that were coming together for their love of the instrument. And you had a lot of collectors there that had a lot of rare old stuff. You had a lot of boutique manufacturers that were there as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was just kind of sweet to be around people that are devoted to the drums like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the story I came out with from the show, the main story, and I've been many, many years, was uh, the boutique nature of what's going on now. In fact, I posted yesterday some interviews I did. I had three boutique guys you probably haven't heard of, and they represent what's going on there because there's a, a, a cool thing going on in the industry where a lot of small time, I don't mean small time, small players, manufacturers are coming into the fold for drums, snare drums, accoutrements for the drums, anything you can think of, and of course cymbals. There were probably 10 or more, at least 10 cymbal smiths there. And uh, we talked about that in some of the interviews that, that you can see on the Drummer Nation site. Um, so anyway, this was uh, not my first rodeo there, but the first time participating. And let's let's show a few slides to the people to see, so they can see. It's held at the F Kane County Fairgrounds, which is in St. Charles, which is a suburb of uh, a nice suburb of Chicago. And the place has uh, you go inside. There's a, a two-story atrium that that is kind of the center of things, and then on each end of the hall are. are of the atrium or exhibit halls, full, full, full of, of uh, people showing off their wares. And you can go to his site or his Facebook page or a lot of people were there. You can, they're all posting videos and walkthroughs and all that. So I'm not gonna do much about that. Upstairs were the clinic rooms, presentation rooms where we all did our thing. There's uh, Adam doing his thing. I uh, just wanted you to see the room. We got better pictures of Adam. Uh, that's the program. I'm delighted to be on the cover there with some great drummers. I'm just an industry guy who plays drums for a living, but these guys are something else. And here they are. There's Bernie Dressel. Bernie Dressel, uh, L.A. drummer extraordinaire. Uh, Adam Nussbaum doing his thing. Um, that's um, Wayne and, uh, and Bernie. And, Wayne um, Saltzman. Wayne Saltzman, I'm sorry. And Gary Astridge, who is a Beatles guy. He's a Ringo curator and um, is tight with Ringo, and he always does these great presentations on the Beatles and Ringo and all that stuff. Uh, there I am with Rob. He was interviewing me. I was happy to say. Here's a few casuals. There's, there's uh, Gary and Bernie. Uh, Les DeMurl was there giving some spot lessons. Um, this is... 
industry veteran, now retired, Jim Catalano, who was interviewed on my other show I posted yesterday, if you want to see that. Uh, and there are a couple and a bunch of knuckleheads. <laughs> no, there's Adam taking the picture, uh, Jerome Dupree next to him, yours truly, and Bobby Sharp. And um, we want to talk about The Hang. The Hang runs deep at that show, doesn't it? Well, it's just a sweet vibe with everybody together. Um, Bobby's a wonderful drummer. He's up around the Cincinnati area. Jerome was a drummer in the band called Morphine. And these mm -hmm. are guys that uh, love the drums and they, they play and they just have a great devotion to the instrument and they help to just bring forth goodwill with the community, which is a nice thing. And it was sweet to just see all these people who have this devotion. So you kind of feel like we're all in this tribe together and mm -hmm. we all uh, have a great desire to uh, see this stuff. And, you know, it's fun when we get to break bread and hang out and bring people together. It's, it's a nice thing. I'm all about community. I know there's a few of them around. I think there's also Joe Meckler does one down in Delaware. Mm -hmm. which is another show. And I, I'm sure there's some other ones around well, the country. Yeah, they're all over. The new, the newest one, I believe, is the one in Nashville called Music City Drum Show. It's a couple of kids who ran okay. that. It's been out two years now, and it's in July. Mm -hmm. And they're all of a similar vein in which they invite exhibitors to come. And these are exhibitors who, you know, with all these companies, dealers can't really, manu can't really handle, you know, if you're a drum shop, you're going to carry a few of the known brands and you're going to go deep into their to their products, but there you can't carry a hundred symbol brands. So they, they can't, they're small companies. They don't belong at NAMM because that's a dealer show. They probably can't afford PASIC because that gets very expensive, but these local regional shows are right up their alley and it, and it, it draws out people who are looking for boutique products, people who are tied into uh, the, the, the whole uh, uh, not nostalgia, but the history of the of the instrument, the passion, and all that, and so they're just yeah. a great spot to learn about new companies and new people involved. Um, yeah, there was one in Connecticut. There was the Connecticut Drum Show. Mm -hmm. It was uh, coordinated by a gentleman named Rob Cook. It was very nice. That was up near Hartford, I believe. Well, Rob Cook is this one. Who you? I don't know who's in Connecticut. No, not Rob Cook. Um, oh. I'm having a senior moment. Yeah, I hear you. There's one I went to in uh, I'll find his uh, name. New Hampshire once. I don't think they're still doing it. Uh, Kerry Crutchfield was running the one in L.A., the Hollywood drum show. Uh, anyway, wow. if there's one near you, you should make a point to go. There's usually exhibit hall or halls with all these people showing their wares, and you can buy them right there on the floor, and some area for a drum clinic so that you have some star power to bring people in, and they get exposed to the boutique manufacturers, and all the drummers come through, and it's just a love-in, man. It's really cool. All of them are. And Rob is the, the champion of them all. So, again, yeah, he, push this up. He, Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. I mean, you know, <laughs> he's done all these fantastic books about symbols, about calf heads, things about the different companies, the Gretsch Company, Slingerland, Ludwig, Leedy, Ludwig, George Way. He's dug deep into the history. Definitive and, uh, source. And, you know, think about it, the drum set as we know it, it's just maybe 100 years old or a little, a little over. Well, to that so end, every now and then, Rob used to do, I don't know if he does it anymore, but I think the tour is still on his site somewhere that you can do yourself. He would do, some guys would stay the next day, and he would do a tour of Chicago drum sites. <laughs> you want to talk about some inside stuff. You're like in a neighborhood, look in that basement, see through that window? Yeah, that's where WFL invented the bass drum pedal. <laughs> and you'd see the Deegan building and, and just the Ludwig building and all this historic <clears throat> stuff that came out from Chicago with drums. And the, 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 uh, the creme de la creme of it all was uh, Gene Krupa's grave in Calumet City, which is another wow. suburb of Chicago. So that, that was my favorite part. I did that one year with Rob. But that's the kind of history it is, there it is there. And there's a lot of uh, Ludwig enthusiasts, uh, you know. It used to be Elkhart, and all around that area was the hub. Indiana, of the, right. Was the hub of the manufacturing. 
Now, I asked Remo once if that was because the calf heads were needed from the stockyards there. So no, it, what I really what may have contributed, but that wasn't really the reason. The reason, just that's where the the manufacturers and distribution seem to be centered. So there's a well, lot. Well, it of was the there. middle of the country, so yeah. it was easy to go either way or up or down. You know. In fact, when Nam started, Chicago. I think it was in Chicago. I believe uh, so. The gentleman I'm, I'm referring to for the Connecticut Drum Show is Rick Smith. There you go. Thanks for clarifying yeah. that. And, and, and that of, was a lot. Yeah, that was, it's it's just nice when people get together and uh, we have a nice time. And, there's one in the UK too, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think they have one there and, you know, they they used to have the Music Mesa in Frankfurt. I don't know if that's no, still happening. but I'm not sure. That's much giant. For that's bigger than Nam. Like well, so, sorry it to used to be. Now it's kind of like a big mess. <laughs> yeah, and well, it's kind of changed a lot. The trade shows have changed quite a bit. Um, that's yeah. another show we can do on trade shows in their future, um, and what the online thing has to do with it, and um, it, it's a whole different game than it used to be. We'll just leave it at that for now. But but let's talk about the clinics. I saw all of them, and uh, yours was wonderful, Adam, as as expected. Thank you. And uh, I, I noticed there was a common thread between all, all of them, which was stressing musicality. Nobody got up there and played flashbang, here's my chops, ain't I cool? I know that's I've know. i never been able to do Europe. that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. You know, the, the, the whole thing is, you know, the reason you work as a drummer is that you can gain the trust of the other individuals and you help them feel good. So the thing is, you know, having an understanding of the subject, which is very important. The subject is the music, whatever genre it is that you're into, get into that, explore that, understand how it, the drums can fit in with that. Uh, this is something that's necessary if you want to be able to work. I mean, I've been fortunate to be able to do that. You know, I've never been a chopmeister. I've never thought about that. I've always kind of listened to the music and how can I fit in with that? And then, you know, you hear how the people are that you play with and you got to get a read on what's happening. And uh, it's, it's very important to uh, pay attention. And what does the situation tell you to do? And, then if you can fulfill that situation appropriately, people are going to want you there. You know, it's not just a musical ability. You have to take care of business as a human being, you know, show up on time, be attentive, take care of business. You know, I know a lot of guys, they play great, but a lot of other factors aren't in there. And uh, it's, it's a drag. And the other thing is learning how to, develop your consistency and to just have a clear head. And I, I think this is something where, you know, we can get so caught up in just the mechanics of the instrument. But remember, it's the instrument that you play and you're trying to make music with that instrument with other people. It's not the instrument that gets you the gig. <laughs> and I imagine I'm in safe territory when I say of all those legends you played with I can't imagine like either of the Brecker brothers saying that sounds great Adam but could you play a little more flashy could you show us some more chops could you move around a lot more it said no one ever right that's never happened that's never happened <laughs> never you will. know I've, yeah. had, I've been in situations where people may uh, drop something on me where it makes me think about not what I'm doing but maybe something I shouldn't do Mm, right, right. <laughs> and mistakes quick. mistakes are how we learn so you do the best you can you try to have a good attitude not having an attitude you know we should just have gratitude when you're in a situation mm -hmm. and uh, be happy that you're there and you know make the boss feel happy they'll want to put the smile in your pocket <laughs> smile in their face, smile in your pocket. <laughs> Works both ways. 
All right. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, Adam came with his wife, Susan, who I got to know. And that was very pleasant. And uh, lovely lady. And the star of the show, let's not forget, steals a show everywhere he goes, Cosmo. He, He's somewhere. He, he came <laughs> yeah. with his little dog, and everybody fell in love with the dog. This was tough for him. This was a real sensory overload for him. He slept the whole second day. It's a sensory <laughs> overload for everyone. The same thing for the wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I understand. I mean, you know, it's drums and drummers and cymbals and noise right. and and yeah. music and, and, you know, inside conversations and jokes. And you, you really got to be a drummer and a drum lover, a drum nut to, to, to enjoy this. But if you are, man you will have a great time with these shows. Yeah, I mean, it was a, a lot of fun for Susan to see everybody coming together for the love of the drums. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you had people coming from all over the country, whatever, wherever you're at, as far as your head, as far as, you know, your politics, left, right, up, down. We're all together with the drums. And... uh you know the the drums have always had a a spiritual kind of meaning with rituals and things mm -hmm. like that, and you know going way back to when the man was beaten on his chest. You know, <laughs> it brings people together. Is this this isn't the first show like this Susan's been to, is it? Um, she was at I think a smaller one. I think she may have come up to the Connecticut one which was much smaller but the same kind of thing I, I remember having a wonderful time up there with uh lenny de musio and <laughs> yeah that was great for those of you that don't know lenny de musio was probably the first artist relations person in the industry and he worked for zilch i think right. from the late 50s and he was a uh, just a, a wonderful individual uh he had a lot of knowledge a lot of wisdom and a lot of fun a Funny great as company hell. <laughs> yes a real <laughs> yeah. character as they say oh man when you, when when i think of him you know he's left the building but i always put a smile on my face and me too yeah. he's got the same birthday as my son Okay. May May fourth. May the fourth be with you. May the fourth be with you. Got to watch how you say that. Uh, well, <laughs> this was uh, uh, um, above and beyond the call of duty uh, for Susan for for any wife at this thing. So uh, she was <laughs> she a real was trooper. curious to check it out. Yeah, she wanted to check it out, and we saw some friends on the way home. Right, she was a trooper and, and a good sport. Yeah. Um, well, all right. Anything else to before we? Oh, uh, the other thing about the hang, there's a guy, Arthur Stones, who has sentence symbols. And there's some grassy area behind the thing. He said, hey, man, we're doing a little cookout. Uh, he had some friends from Chicago show up, and they put up some canopy tents and coolers and, and uh, a barbecue grill. And the hang was deep, you know. So, um, and then you get, and then after we had dinner, I had dinner with, with you and Susan, some other people, we ended up, they, they, Hey, we're at the pool. So I'm at the, they are in the same hotel. I'm hanging at the pool till two in the morning. It is, <laughs> it's crazy, man. But, right. uh, it's a drum loving. What can I say? I'm not going to go to bed when I'm going to hang with drummers. Yeah. Yeah. It was also fantastic to go to Maxwell's shop there. Steve Maxwell. I, I got shop. there too late for that. So what he's what he's referring to is Steve Maxwell has a shop nearby. He's not in downtown Chicago anymore. He's pretty close, and he opens does an open house on that Friday night, and that's a great groove. And I got there. My flight was delayed. I couldn't go to that. But did you have a fun time at that? I mean, I just could not believe the amount of incredible vintage instruments that he had there, and. Uh, it was just mind-boggling to see all this stuff. The only place that, that I saw that was, you know, maybe close to that was the Memphis Drum Shop right. that Jim Pettit has. But these guys have a deep love and devotion. And, uh, you know, you see these incredible instruments. It's like walking into the drum catalog from 19, you know, 61. <laughs> they have it all. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I know Steve's a big Gretsch yeah. dealer, too. I kind of know I'm in the right place when I walk into a drum shop and I see a lot of 18-inch bass drums. 
Because uh, uh, if you don't know, a lot of pros love to play those little ones. A lot of jazz players play the little ones. And uh, sometimes you walk into a drum shop and there's nothing smaller than a 22. They have 24s and 26s, but not 18s. <laughs> right, right. I never quite yeah. understood that. It was just a... Uh... It was good for the soul to be yeah. within everybody in the community. It was yeah, a good yeah. feeling. All right. Well, we'll let it go. Rob, we love you, brother, and look forward to seeing, seeing you more. And thank you for all the many years. We'll put this up one more time. Thanks, Rob. That was a button that they had there people were wearing. And uh, It was a treasure. We've got our shirts. a real treasure. Yeah, yeah man. I like it. I like it. They're taking care of everything. And he, care he everything. had that incredible... He had an incredible bass drum there that had, it was shaped like a Y with was, three separate heads on it. It was like a three-headed snake. There were three heads on the bass drum. I'm not quite sure. Did you play it? Man, play, it. play it. You just hit it. It was like. <laughs> yeah. So you can imagine a three-headed thing and you, each one was a drum and they were all connected in the center. I don't know how he did it, Ooh. but it was the centerpiece yeah. here, what he was talking about. Um, yeah. All right. I think we'll wrap it up. You got anything else? Well, I want everybody to have a very uh, enjoyable holiday weekend. Stay right, safe. Memorial Day. I got Memorial Day weekend. That's it. And, you know, let's give thanks to all those veterans out there and everyone that, uh, you know, some. Uh, what do they say? Thank you for all your gave some none gave all. There you go. Right. Yeah. So we th we thank you all for your service if you're in that ilk, and um, we'll let it go. We'll see you next time. Uh, we have another interview with Billy Cobham coming up. If you missed our last one, we he was so generous with his time and so affable and and uh, gregarious that we did an hour and uh, we didn't get past like 1970. So we're gonna get him back and finish that up. And there is a great video. We uh, uh, we asked a bunch of people to submit. He just had his 80th birthday. So a lot of great drummers submitted little uh, testimonials to Billy, and that's posted as another video on our, wherever you get our stuff, podcast portals, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, I, I don't know. It's everywhere we can find to put it. <laughs> well, thank nice? you for doing this, Mr. You're, Mike. Oh, thank you, Adam, for, for being you and being my co-host here. I certainly appreciate you so much. Thank you, man. We'll see you all next time. Thanks a lot. Forgive the canned music again, but we're out. Bye-bye. Aloha.